assembled again to say thank you who has kept thy children to see another day of worship. Thank you for Be that exalted, for there is no God like you, and no God will ever be like you. Amen. As we are about to hear your word, O oh Lord, we pray, let thy spirit lead us. Yes, we cover this message with the blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. We cover this church with the blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. We cover thy churches worldwide with the blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. In Jesus Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. The theme of our message today is putting the whole armor of God. Amen. Amen. A true believer. A child of God need the whole armor of the Most High God. For you to be able to overcome the wicked world of our generation and the satanic kingdom. If you don't mind and you're happy as scripture, please turn with me to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 11, and he says, Put on the whole armor of God, that he may be able to stand against the wise of the devil. And the scripture encouraged the believers to try all you could to put on the whole armor of the Most High God, so that you can be able to withstand the wicked world. You can be able to withstand the occultism of our generation. You can be able to withstand the powers and prosperities of nations. Praise and be God. Amen. And the question is this, what is the whole armor of the Most High God? The armor of the Most High God that you need as a believer is this. You need the power of prayer and fasting. As a child of God. A child of God that is not prayerful and that cannot fast can hardly overcome. Praise and be God. Amen. If you are still having your scripture, please still talk with me to the book of Mark to see the advice of Jesus about one of the animals that we need as believers. Mark chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 29. And he says, And he said unto them, This kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. And when Jesus was on earth, educating believers about what you need as a child of God to overcome the wicked world and our generation, he says, Such demon cannot be cast out. Such situation cannot be overcome easily, except when you implemented prayers and fasting. This is why prayers and fasting is important for the children of God. Before the ministration of Christ on earth, he knew the battle would be so difficult. He knew it would not be easy. And what he did was this. He started with prayer and fasting. He fasted for 40 days, and he prayed for 40 days and 40 nights. And it is applicable for I and you. Before you can overcome certain situation, you need prayers. You need fasting. Before you can overcome the ancestral forces and powers that most of us have believed, that they are the cause of our problems today, you need prayers. You need fasting. Before you will overcome the occult world, as we can witness that our world is filled with occultism. Occultism in the church. Occultism in the marketplace. Occultism in the social gathering. You need prayers. You need fasting. Before you can overcome them. Praise that being God. Amen. I proceed to the second armor that is important for I and you. God's fearing. God's fearing is important for a child of God. It is one of the armors that is being needed. When you are a God-fearing child of God, the angels of God will surround you. The angels of God will keep fighting your battle. If you don't mind and you are having your scriptures, still talk with me to the book of Acts of Apostles. Acts chapter 10. 
I'm reading from verse 3. And he says, He saw in a vision, evidently, about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius, verse 4. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thy arms are come up for a memorial before God. Praise and thank God. Amen. When you read from verse 1, it says, Colinus was a God-fearing man. Who was so God-fearing? And because of his God-fearing, his prayers went unto God. No power can stop your prayers when you are God-fearing. The occult world cannot stop your prayers. The gods of nations cannot stop your prayers. The wicked men of our generation cannot stop your prayers when you are God-fearing. Because Galinos was a God-fearing child of God, well devoted in the things of God. And the scripture says, God sent forth an angel to locate him because he was God-fearing. And his prayers was being heard. When you are God-fearing, no power can stop your prayer. The little magicians that we have seen rise around our, our corner and in our societies will never stop your prayers. Praise and thank God. Amen. The third factor is holiness. A child, God, a, 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 a child of God that is holy, that keeps himself holy, your prayer will be so powerful. Why so many prayers are not being answered? It's because we lack that holiness. It's because of defilement of our generation. If you still have your Bible, please still talk with me to the book of 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 16. The book of 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 16 says, Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Amen. Amen. Before God we accept your prayer, before you can have a solid communication with God, you must keep yourself holy. Because God is holy. And the scripture says, be holy because who has called you, who has created you in his image, is holy. And what are the defilements that defies us before God? In my own personal opinion, some of the defilements that defies us before God is this. When we are into witchcraft, as I can see in our communities, most women are into witchcraft. Most men are wizards. It defies our relationship with God. It destroys our holiness before our God. And our prayers will not be effective. The second point is idolatry. I do worship. Magicians. Those that communicate with the spirits of the dead. Those that go to the temples and shrine for rituals and sacrifice. Worshipping the powers of the water. Worshipping the powers of the graves. Automatically, you are defiled. You are not even qualified to come into the church of Christ. And that was why Christ will not take idol worshippers when he will be back again. According to the indication of the scripture, from Genesis to Revelation, indicated properly that idol worshippers will never see God. And this is what we have commonly seen today in the churches of Christ. Praise and thank God. Amen. And I went to a third factor, adultery and fornication. Adorators and fornication, fornicators cannot go into the kingdom of God. According to the instruction of this scripture. This is part of what destroys our relationship with God. What defies us before God. What defies and defies our prayers before God? Defilement, adultery, fornication. And we commonly see it today in the churches. And so many people have been raising questions. Why is it that our prayers are not effective? Why is it that God is not answering our prayers? Why is it that there is no miracles in our generation? 
but when you think properly to the generation that has passed before we, God listened to their prayers. They performed lots of miracles. Starting from Moses, Moses performed lots of miracles. Miracles that the world acknowledged unto this day. Non-believers, they acknowledge the miracles of Moses. I've met with the Egyptians, Islamic Egyptians, and they said, yes, they know about Moses. They confirmed the story of Moses and about the great miracles that he performed in the land of Egypt. The same God is still existing unto this day. We come to hear about the great miracles of Elijah the prophet, Elisha, Joshua, Jeremiah, Isaiah, and the rest of the holy prophets because they refrained from things that will defy them. They kept themselves holy, and God answered them. They did not try to support the church with occultism, which is what we have seen today in our generation. When the pastors, missionaries, bishops, tries to support the church with occultism, it is out of the will of God. It is an abomination before the living God. And this is why our prayers are no longer effective before God. I will never be effective. Praise the living God. Amen. I move to the fourth option. Lesbianism and homosexualism. Things that we have seen commonly today in the churches. And the governments of the world have supported such evil and abomination to believers. And how do you believe that God will hear the prayer of the wicked? And the book of Proverbs says, the prayer of the wicked is an abomination before the living God. Because they are defiled. They have not kept to the commandments of God. They have not tried to follow the ways of God. And God has hidden his face from their prayers. Praise the living God. Amen. I proceed again to one of the armors that is being needed in my life and in your life as the children of God. Faith. Faith is important. You cannot deal with God without faith. Before you can communicate with God, you must have that faith. You must believe Him. You must acknowledge Him. Acknowledge the power and the ability of the Most High God. Turn with me please to the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, to see what he says about faith. I'm reading from the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, and verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Praise and thank God. Amen. Most people go to church to seek for pastor. They have more faith in pastor, more than having faith in the Most High God. Pastor is a man like you. A man that will exist for a short period of time on earth. Pastor will not exist forever. Pastor is not an omnipotent creature, but he is a creature of the Most High God. And the scripture says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it is impossible to see God. Without faith, it is impossible to receive the miracles of God. Without faith, it is impossible for your prayers to go to God. When you don't have faith, you are missing. You cannot find God. Because most pastors doesn't have that faith. That was why they go into demonic temples and shrines to support their administration. This is why they go to the crepes to support the administration. Because they don't have faith. They are confused of what they are doing. And the scripture says, you must believe the living God. Have faith in that God who has created all things. Why I believe the most high God is because he is the only potent God. There is no God again that is the only potent. Be it on earth, be it in the firmament. Except the most high God. And that was how I believed him. And when I go to the accounts of the prophets that has followed God diligently in faith, they were undefeated. And that was why I believe I will be undefeated throughout my ministration. 
Praise the living God. Amen. And so far, in all the battles that I have encountered with different gods, with different pastors, I have defeated them clearly. Praise the living God. Amen. I'm encouraging you to have faith in God. Amen. Don't have faith in the creatures and forget the creator. Have faith in the creator who has created all things. Praise the living God. Amen. And the next more that you need as a child of God is night prayers, deep night prayers. It is so important. Ask yourself, why is it that midnight prayer is so important more than any other thing? The reason is this. At midnight is when the demonic kingdom do operate. The witches and wizards operate at midnight. The occultic world operates at midnight. The marine spirits operate at midnight. The gods and goddess of nations, they operate at midnight when you are asleep. That is when they destroy your business. That is when they destroy your marriage. That, that is when they destroy your future. And that is when they destroy all you have labored for. And for this reason, and the scripture encourage I and you, keep watch at night. If you don't mind and you're having your scripture, just turn with me to the book of Matthew. Chapter 26, to see the instruction of Christ Jesus unto his followers. Matthew chapter 26, I'm reading from verse 41. And he says, And he covered unto the disciples, and finded them asleep, and said unto Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? 41. Watch and pray that he enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Praise the living God. Amen. And when Jesus was about to say his last prayers, before facing his duty on earth, he took his disciples. He took few of his disciples to the mountain of prayers. And at night he started praying. The scripture says he prays all night through. That is when you have power to overcome your enemies. That is when you have power to overcome the witches and wizards. That so that your business will not collapse again. But with what I'm seeing, we are not ready for the prayers. The children of God are not ready. At midnight is when the witches do operate. The spirit of the dead operates at midnight. The native doctors, witch doctors, they operate at midnight. When you are weak and asleep, they destroy all you have labored for. And this is why Jesus warned. Keep watch. Keep watch. Pray for you not to enter into temptation. For you not to go into difficult situation again. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you don't mind, stay talk with me, please. To the book of Ephesians, chapter 6. To see the threats and the dangers of I and you in our world. Ephesians, chapter 6, and verse 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Praise the living God. Amen. And the scripture keep warning I and you. Our battle, our failure, our lamentations, our problems is not what we are seeing. Our battle is not against the flesh and the blood. But our battle is against principalities. Each of the nation has their power. Each nation of this earth do have power that governs them. And when you go into any nation, automatically that power will be affecting you. This is why you need prayer. This is why you need Christ Jesus to be by your side. He says, powers. We fight against powers. Many people have vowed you will not succeed on your journey. 
Many people has thought that even when you succeed, you will not be alive to reap the fruit of your labor. Many people has vowed that your health will not be suitable. Many has vowed that your family will not be peaceful. We, we face these powers. Different powers on our heads is what we face. It is not for you. I'm not pleading to you for you to seek for solution. I'm not saying you should please seek for solution. But I'm telling you for you to be aware of what you need to do if you want to overcome such powers. In your business environment, it is not easy. I have seen what is happening, even in this land, among the so-called business products. I've seen what is happening. It is not easy. There are powers that, that are still suppressing your business or to grow, or trying to destroy your business entirely in this land, among your same African communities. I'm not talking about the Koreans. This is why you need to awake look for your God and look for solution. And he proceeds to say, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, we have so many groups of darkness of this world. You battle against them. You are in danger against them. You are not part of them. They will not save you. They will not secure you. You are, you are a you remain a danger in as much as they exist. This is why you need prayers. And finally, he says, the spiritual wickedness, some of the situations that you are passing through or that you are facing, it is not the will of God. Just be clear with that. It is not the will of God that we continue in that ugly situation. It is not the will of God. It is not the will of God. At the time you, will, you are about to rise, sudden death will come. It is not the will of God. That sickness, it is not the will of God. That hardship, it is not the will of God. That disappointment in your marriage life, it's not the will of God. Most evil that we face today, possibly, it is not the will of God. And this is why each, every one of us need to stand. I could remember a few years ago, I was so weak spiritually. And before I know what was happening, the enemies invaded me. And when Christ called me to rise and stand to fight my battle, I started praying. It is most I must do that to save my life and to save my family. I started doing it. And that was when I started overcoming them. You must fight your battle to overcome them. This was why the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 11 says, Put on the whole armor of God. Put it on. For you to be able to overcome in all your circumstances and challenges. Praise the living God. Amen. If you don't mind that you are still having your Bible, please don't read it to the book of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, I read from verse 4, and it says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Praise the King God. Amen. And the scripture says, The weapons of our warfare, the weapons for you to overcome the spiritual world, it is not carnal. It is not something carnal, but it is spiritually through the Most High God in pulling down the kingdoms of darkness. You need it. You need prayers. How old are you today? How old will you be tomorrow when you want to face your challenges? If you don't face your challenges, eventually, most of us may end so bad, end up so bad. We've seen people that end up so bad in the past, and we believe 
Most of us believed that they didn't work hard. That was why they ended up so bad. That is not the case. They worked so hard. But the truth is this. Spiritually, they are not awake. Spiritually, they are weak. Spiritually, they fail to fight their battle. And this is why the scripture is encouraging you. It says, the power of the children of God is so powerful through Christ Jesus. Your pastor cannot see you through in what you are passing through in this land or in your life. It is between you and your God. Your pastor is not God. Your native doctor is not God. No matter the spiritual help that you have went to for solution, they cannot give you solution. The only power that can give you solution is Christ Jesus, the Son of the living God. And the scripture says, through him, you push down the kingdoms of darkness. I proceed to verse 5. And verse 5 says, Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience, God has given you power to control so many things in your life. God has given you power to make a better way for yourself. God has given you power to overcome the imagination of the wicked. Who cares for you and who loves you? Perhaps, if I'm not mistaken, the only person that cares for you a bit, perhaps, may be your mom, may be your wife. But apart from these two people, no one cares for you anymore. Your father doesn't care for you. He provides your need. Your friends doesn't care for you. They can only support. But who cares for you is the most high God. Who can stand for you totally? And the scripture says, go into the most high God in the power of prayers. To pull down the imagination of the wicked imagination of your neighbors, imagination of your business associates, imagination of your church members. Most of us have wicked imagination against each other. And the only way to overcome is, to put, is, is, is through Christ Jesus, who will empower you to put them down. I've seen series of cases where brothers kill brothers, sister kills sister, husband kills the wife, Wife kills the husband, so on and so forth. Automatically, I come to conclude we are not safe in this world without the help of God. This is the end of our message. My, pray, my prayer to, for you is this for God to give you the power of prayers, be strong as a child of God, to overcome the imagination of the wicked. May God bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.